really glad you're a substitute teacher when Mrs. McGuire's sick, Mrs. Stewart. Well, thank you, David. I'm sorry she's not here this week. I know how fond you are of her. Yeah. How about we make her a get well card? How would that be? Okay, that'd be great. Now, children, we're about to have an exciting hour of dance. Can you feel the energy? Yes, Mrs. Maxfield. I can too. Good posture, big smiles. Now, please go to your places with your partner. Dang it. Everyone in places? Places? Are you listening to me, Mr. Hatcher? Tomorrow you will spend your recess in the boiler room. Right now, I want you to go to the playground and do two laps. Yes, Miss O'Donnell. And hand those over before you put somebody's eye out. Tuck your shirt in. Go. All right, class, let's get back into our places. What's he doing? He's just standing there. He's not going to try and climb that, is he? What's going on? We'll talk about the science fair. Cool. You want to help? Uh-uh. My old man said I can't ever do another one with you. Never. Were those his exact words? Because if he's talking about last year, that wasn't my fault. Why, we had a perfectly good volcano till you stuffed all your leftover fireworks in there. Hey, Leon, you want to help me with I've that? I've got done. Or a mountain of nail and soda pop. I'm doing a rocket with my dad. We're doing magnets. Dang it, everybody's stealing my ideas. Lyle, have you found a partner yet? Not yet, Mrs. Stewart. 
Melvin, what about you? Have you decided on a project? Yes, Mount Vesuvius, the destruction of Pompeii. It'll be glorious. Melvin, that sounds fascinating. Lyle, what do you think? Mm, I did a volcano last year. Excuse me, Mrs. Stewart, may I use the restroom? Of course. Lyle, would you go with him, please? Lyle, would you go with him, please? Yes, Mrs. Stewart. Thank you. Hey, David! Hey, how fast do you think those will go? Maybe 20 miles per hour? It's not for racing. I know, I know that. What's the fast you ever gone it? Like, you're going super fast, like super, super fast. How would you stop it? It has brakes, you know, right here, but it's not for racing. What are you doing? gonna hear us. Miss O'Donnell, ugh. I like her. I think she's nice. Well, why don't you marry her then? That's what I thought. But I have a question. How come you're in a wheelchair? I know I've got muscular dystrophy. Does that mean you can't walk? Well, no, I can walk, but I need help with it. Hey, how come they make you run all the time? Well, that, uh, that's not what everybody thinks. I mean, I'm not in trouble or anything like that. You're not? Heck no. See, I got this thing. My brother calls it the feeling. It's kind of a problem. Okay. Well, I was wondering about it. I mean, what's it like? You know when little drummers kind of got to wind up? Yeah. You know when you wind them up and 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 you let them go and they go like this? Are you kidding me? That's what running is like? Running? I thought we were talking about the feeling. Haven't you ever ran before? My mom says I ran when I was little, but I, I don't remember it. You run more than anybody I've ever seen. Oh, anybody can do it. Even me? Well, you could do it, definitely. And you know what else? I can climb that tree. Hey, could you hand me the tube and the green thing, please? Sure. Oh, yeah. Just stop it! Give it to me. Sorry, I was just trying to have a little fun. I mean, what's it for anyways? My urinal tube. Give me a sec. I wonder when Mrs. McGuire's coming back. I don't like having a substitute teacher. She's always staring at me. Actually, Mrs. McGuire is my favorite teacher ever. Me too. She's really sick though. And she's not going to make it. Not gonna make it to what? No, I mean, she's going to die. What are you talking about? That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. You don't know that. Anyway, who told you that? The doctor? Because if he did, I want to call him right now. Did the doctor tell you that? No. No, it wasn't the doctor. Mr. Inquirer called me last night and asked me to pray for her because she's in the hospital. So, Mr. McGuire told you she's going to die? Mr. McGuire didn't tell me. God told me.
Hey, help your brother set the table. Hey, Mom. Mm -hmm. Do you believe in God? What have you done now? Nothing, Mom. I just want to know. Because this kid at my school said God told him Mrs. McGuire's going to die. I'm not making this up. He really said that. Well, I think you should talk to your friend at school about it. How do I know if God told him that or not? But I can tell you one thing I do know is that it is time for dinner. Wash your hands. Help your brothers at the table. But, Mom... Lyle, you heard your mother. If you yield to temptation once, it's easier the next time. The next time it's a little easier. Then he's got you. But every time you do the right thing, See you later, keep doing it, you're doing it, do it pretty soon, you're not going to be able to do it. Can Bye, Mom. Bye. Can you get so your lunch? Bye, Mom. Bye, Mom. Bye, do the wrong thing. Remember that you have somebody with you 24 hours a day that wants to help you. That great physician above, when temptation gets too great, you ask him for help to give you the intestinal fortitude and the willpower to do the right things. Will you do that and see if it doesn't work? Lyle, I'm not writing a note. Take the right Go. foot and bring it over at the side and down to the original position. Doing the hoochie coochie in gym class yesterday? Are you ever gonna learn? It doesn't matter. I get in trouble for everything anyway. Even stuff I don't do. Well, maybe it makes up for all the times you don't get caught. You spend way too much time in here, and you got no one to blame but yourself. There you go, dancer boy. Why don't you hoochie-coochie with that for a while? <sighs> Mr. Merrick? Do you think there's such a thing as God? Such a thing as God? Would you lie awake at night thinking up these questions for me? No. No, I just want to know. Because this kid in my class said God told him Mrs. McGuire is going to die. And that's crazy, and it makes me mad. But what if he's right? So I really want to know if he talks to God. It doesn't really matter what your friend says, and it doesn't matter what I say either. It's something you need to decide on your own, pure and simple. So you don't think there's a God, do you, Mr. Merrick? Don't try that on me. You can't trick people into saying what you think you need to hear. It's one of the reasons you end up in here so often. Okay, okay, I was just asking. <gasps> but what if for the science fair, I did a test to see if God was real or not? What about that? If I could figure out a way to get David Dalkey to run, then that would prove- All right, you're doing a science project. When exactly does it have to be done? Parent night, why? Parent night. People have been tossing that question around for thousands of years, and they're still bickering over it. So I don't think you're going to be getting it figured out by the time parent night rolls around. Hey, listen up. If you two are doing something together, you need to pick a project you can finish on time. And if you're working with David, you're going to need to slow down. Hey, where do you live? Oh, just around the corner. Great, that's right on the way to my house. Come on. Okay, my brother Dennis is going to come pick me up. Hey, Mr. Merrick thought we should do a science project together. Really? Well, we were talking about it. That'd be great, but that... me and my brother are stuffing a weasel. Stuffing a weasel? Are you kidding me? That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. Do you actually have a weasel? Yep. Are you sure you don't want me to help? I'm great with animals. <laughs> no thanks. The weasel's already in the freezer. My brother Dennis is helping me. He does taxidermy. You're so lucky, stopping a weasel. <laughs> <laughs> nice face. Hey there, my name's Dennis, but you can call me Dennis. My name's Lyle, and you can call me... Uh... How about Mr. Blue? Oh, yeah, Mr. Blue. Blue's the only color I can see. I'm colorblind. It's a recessive gene. Dino? Does your dog have it, too? Dino. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, he's a neighbor's dog. We hike and climb and chase the animals. Last week, we found a porcupine. OK, so you're a Daniel Boone kind of guy. What about swimming? You like to go swimming? You bet. I'm a great swimmer. I can swim like a fish. Let's see. Good job, guys. Guys, what are we? <laughs> <laughs> you told me. 
my brother, you could swim like a fish. I took lessons. No way. Yeah, I did. Okay, okay, so I flunked the test. But they made us run 10 miles all the way at the dog by water in your lake. I almost made it though. How far did you get? Halfway. Then I turned around and swam back. Wait a minute. If you were halfway and you swam back, it's the same distance. The same as what? The same as making it. I didn't make it all right. Hey David, I just noticed something about your legs. They're huge. Yeah, you've got some big old toad legs. As long as the dickens. Look at mine, look at them. I've got short wiener dog legs. <laughs> Have you ever seen a wiener dog hunt for ducks before? <laughs> no, never. You and me, we're totally opposite. I can't float, and you can't sink. Isn't that crazy? On top of that, your feet are huge. They're like fins with toes. You're a giant toad. Oh, well, look who's talking, wiener dog. <laughs> oh, I love that thing. Oh, that's huge. No kidding, this is the biggest spider I ever saw. No, that's his name. Oh, hello, huge. Oh, what's its name? Well, that's Gypsy. Mm. Holy smokes! Look at all those bugs. It's a giant gold mine. That's my Coleoptera collection. And this is my Puchella Puella. Ooh, handsome and smart. That means pretty girl in Latin. What's this? That's the Wizard XL 2000. Check it out. Just put this guy right in there. Can you do any letters you want? Oh, yeah, you can pop any of them. We got a bunch right there, too. So I'm going to make this one just for you. Hopefully, you like it. How come it takes so long? Well, you put it in the metal, so it's going to take a little bit. That's so cool. <laughs> hey, can you make me one that says Lyle plus Sharon Ann equals true love? Uh, probably <laughs> not right now, but. <laughs> hey, David, maybe for the science fair, you and me can make some of Boys. these. Boys. There's something I need to tell you. It's about Mrs. McGuire. Miss O'Donnell called. She wanted you to know before you go to school tomorrow. I'm very sorry, but Mrs. McGuire passed away. I need to go. Thank you for letting me swim in the pool, Mrs. Dockey. Of course. Bye, David.
Do you know what this is? Yeah, it's it's a... Redwing Grasshopper. Do you know the only way to catch a Redwing Grasshopper is? Yeah. You gotta run down till it poops out. It can take days to catch him. So I was thinking, you and me, we can do a giant bug collection, get the blue ribbon, maybe even go to state. That'd be great, but me and- Do you know anyone that can run down a red winged grasshopper? Well, no, but No, I... you don't. So here's the plan. I'm gonna teach you everything I know about running. And I know a lot, including stuff nobody else knows. Nobody. Like stuff about intestinal fortitude and how to do the right thing so you can work a miracle. Because that's what you're gonna need if you wanna run. Lyle, it's getting away. It's okay. We can catch another one. You and me. Mom? Can Lyle stay for dinner? Okay, this is the most important part of the plan. Once we do this, it's Scout's honor. You can't tell anyone I'm teaching you how to run. But you can't tell anyone my secret either. Running is your secret, okay? Now this might hurt a little. Here, give me your thumb. You don't have to look if you don't want to. Tough guy, huh? See, that wasn't so bad. Okay, now it's your turn. I know, I know, now hold your horses. Man, this blade is sharper than the Dickens. Yeah, I know. You want me to do it? It might be a lot easier here. Good gravy, David. I'm a lion in the Cub Scouts. I think I know what I'm doing. Holy smokes, it got after thumb off. Hello, Sharon Ann. Hi, Francine. Do you by any chance have a Kleenex? You're going to have some explaining to do. Man, Mr. Stratton got me good this time. Did it hurt? No. Dave, look. <laughs> nice. Okay, so it sounds like Lyle had another visit with the paddle. And what's with the thumb being all bandaged? I can't really tell you, Mr. Merrick. We made a pact. Oh, I see. So that's how it works. Hey, do you know where this goes? It says don't throw away. Guys, do not panic. You aren't gonna believe what I found. We're gonna need a jar, a big one. A jar? Why do I have a bad feeling about this? Whoa! Uh, holy smokes! Found it! Latridectus mactane, Black Widow. And here I thought it was just a spider. She's not just a spider, Mr. Mark. She's the queen. Hey, wait a minute. She's only got seven legs. It's for our science project. We're making a bug collection. Tell you what, boys, why don't I keep an eye on her for you till after school? A black widow spider. Goodness gracious. Thank you, Mr. Merrick, but I will attend to this. Give me the jar. And Mr. Hatcher? I suggest you pick a different science project. Perhaps one less dangerous. Oh, 
powder in your bag. Keep this just between us. How'd you do it, Mr. Merrick? Did you sneak into her office when she wasn't looking? You got your queen back. Now get. This is going to be the flat out biggest, coolest bug collection ever. With every different kind of bug there is. So you do the labels because you know Latin. Wait a minute. I, I don't know Latin. But you know about the pool cello jello thing Dennis is saying to his girlfriend. So you have to do the labels. And I'll get the hard to catch bugs like the robber fly. Throw them some possible. And you never see a praying mantis and the skipper dragonfly. You gotta catch them right after they eat when they're slow, slow mo. It can take days to catch them. Days? Are you kidding me? We don't have that much time. Don't worry, David. I've got a super secret weapon. You do? Really? Yep. It's called the river lock. It's a spider city. And then Sharon Ann says, Wow, you're the best dancer ever. Better than Fred Astaire. <laughs> and I go, yeah, yeah, I can shake a leg. And then and she, she goes, what about all the stuff you were going to teach me about running? Hey, I'm telling a story here, and she never said that. I know, exactly. Jeez, David, you think I'm just sitting here blabbing? Well, I'm not. I'm working on it right now. You are just sitting there blabbing. First it's Sharon Ann, blah, blah, blah. And then it's blah, blah, blah. All right, Sharon. all right. You asked for it. Are you ready? Yes. OK. Now do what I'm doing. How long do we have to do this? Shh, I promise you will just dedicate a few minutes a day, you'll get your results. Just a few minutes a day. Are you with me? Yes, I'm with you. All right, now picture yourself running. Do you feel it? I think so. Is this really gonna work? Shh, it's already working. I think they're done. Oh, that's a big pile of spiders. Here, pins. We're not gonna use pins. We're gonna make them really like, like one ready to pounce, another one ready to bite you, another one cool. that's- Cool. Can you really do that? Definitely. Hey, Mom, look. Whoa! Where did you get those? Me and David caught them at the river log. Go put them somewhere that I don't have to look at them. Right now. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Ah, look out, look out, look out. All right. Come here. Don't worry, Mom. I'll kill them all. Here. Steve! Here. Steve, stop it. Steve it. Here. Come on. How many do we have? Ten. Is that it? Don't forget the one on the wall. Eleven with the one on the wall. Is that all of them? Oh no, the queen's missing. The queen? Yeah, the black widow. She's big and shiny with a red hourglass. I know what a black widow looks like.
When are you gonna do it? Yesterday, tomorrow, Christmas, New Year's? When are you gonna do it? There's only one time to start improving yourself, and there's only one time that's important in your life, and you know what it is? Right here, I'll show you what it is. This is the most important time of your life. Now, N-O-W, this can make your life or break it. Put that thing back in the now, garbage right this minute. Now, may I spend the next minute. half hour with you? Mom, I have to show it to David. Well, then get yours, going and first, take that thing impossible. with you. Believe me, if you just use a little willpower, like we talked about yesterday, and ask the good physician above for guidance to give you that willpower to go ahead and do it, then I don't care what your problem is, you can make yourself over. You can be reborn again if you do something else. Get out, going please now. Please don't get discouraged, all right? Promise me? That's all I want. Now let's combine these two movements, students. I thought we were going for the blue ribbon. We can't use these. I know, I know that. But they all came back to life, and my mom stomped them into the ground. Well, what'd you guys use to kill them? Alcohol. A lot of it. <laughs> they didn't come back to life. They sobered up. You guys are going to have to use carbon tetrachloride next time. And be careful. That stuff's deadly. Dave and I will make you a bigger box. Huh, little brother? <laughs> you bet. We're running out of time. We only have one lousy black widow spider and we don't even know where she is. What are we gonna do? Don't worry, David. I've got a super secret weapon. Really? You do even better than- Yep. It's me. You wanna know what we're gonna do? We're going back to the river log. We are? You mean ah, <sighs> David. If you're gonna fix something, there's only one time to do it that's important. Do you know when that is? It's not Christmas, it's not New Year's, it's now. N-O-W. Are you with me? Here it is. Now it's a doozy. I don't want you to get discouraged or anything to get in your way. At first, you'll think it's impossible. But believe me, if you just ask a good physician above for guidance and to give you the willpower to do the right thing, then I don't care what you do next. Wait a minute. What did you just say? Uh. What did you say right then about the good physician above? Oh, oh, what I said was, if you just ask a good physician above for guidance and to give you the willpower to do the right thing, that I don't care. Wait a second. Wait just a doggone second. Jacqueline Lane said that on TV this morning. This whole thing is Jacqueline. Lane. Okay, that does it. Just grab my hand. What are you doing? Just grab him. <laughs> you can't do it. I'm too heavy. <laughs> Why you put me down? Why? Stop. Come on, try to run. I got you. You're starting to run. Oh my God. I can't breathe! Wow! I can't breathe! Back to the barn! Oh, faster! Come on! Go faster! You wanna run? Yeah! Let's run! <laughs> man, oh man, we were really booking. <laughs> yeah, we were. Get off. I saw Sharon Ann looking at me this morning. Sharon Ann, really? Yep, it was Sharon Ann, I promise. Okay, Mr. Blue, if we're talking about Sharon Ann, once she looked right at me and said, David, you have the most deep, oh, gorgeous I know where this eye. is going. This conversation is over, okay? <laughs> Look, a lucky feather. Cool. So, David, when God talks to you, how do you know it's God? I've never thought about it before because I've always known it since the time I was little. Well, has he ever told you about anybody else that's gonna die? I mean, besides Mrs. McGuire? No, thanks. When Mrs. Greer got cancer, she asked me to pray for her. She wanted to live long enough to raise her two boys, and God told me she'd be okay. Wow. 
And she's still alive too. That means he was right. Will he ever change his mind about something if you ask him? <laughs> it doesn't work like that. Well, when you talk to him, what's it like? Can you see him? How big is he? Does he glow? <laughs> no, I never see him. Well, what's he sound like then? Moses? Let my people go! <laughs> He doesn't sound like anything. That doesn't make any sense. How can he not sound like anything? He just comes into my head and I know the answer. That's it. Should you be eating those? They're gonna make you crazy. What are you talking about? This isn't for me, it's for you. Come on, we better get going, we're late. You have got to stop obsessing over Sharon Ann. Granted, she's cute, but that doesn't mean you have to devote your life to her. What are you doing? Look, we're late, David. You don't understand. It's a lot faster this way. Can't you read? No trespassing. Don't worry. Nothing's going to happen. I've got this. My lucky feather. My mom's going to kill me if she ever finds out. Dino! Dino! You're not coming. Wait here, I've got to go get Hiding like a bad guy, no one is a French fry. Ambush, brush, fire, trigger, man, snake. We rocked, we rebounded, we rebounded. What's gone? Have you never seen Road Kill before? Grab him! Shoot the run! Sad part, no part. Stop it! Leave him alone! Let's get out of here! so good. Let's go home. Hey, David. The next time you talk to God, can you ask him something for me? What do you want me to ask him? Ask him if you'll run again. Can you do that? I did ask God about that. You what? <laughs> I've been working on this running plan all this time, and you didn't even tell me? I didn't think you would believe me. I asked him if I would run. You know, no wheelchair, no braces, just like everybody else. I asked him if I would run like that. Well, what did he say? He told me I would. With you. With me? God told you that? That'll be great. You and me running? We'll fly. Hey, hold still. Don't you go tearing up on me. Tears are for hurts of the heart. It's not about that, Mom. I need to figure out a way to help David. A real way. I told him I'd teach him how to run, but it isn't really working. And you what? Jacqueline says anybody can be whole again, and that it doesn't matter if you're in a wheelchair, and that all you have to do to work a miracle is have the intestinal fortitude. Honey, Jacqueline wasn't talking about kids with muscular dystrophy. I know you mean well. But sometimes all you can do is be the best friend that you can be. I know, Mom. But I need to find a way to help David. Something that'll really work. Mr. and Mrs. Dalkey raise money so they can find a cure. Last year he could walk, but now he's in a wheelchair. He's getting worse. And I need to raise money or else he'll never run again. Well, you can collect pop cans and bottles or pull weeds for Margot. 
That's like 20 cents, Mom. It's going to take a lot more than that. Well, I'm sure you'll think of something. <laughs> Got it. I'm definitely saving this. And push up. Okay. Ready? Push up. Yeah. All right. I got it. I got it. I'm gonna walk you out. All right. All right. <sighs> Did you see that? Get back here. You need a note and your lunch and your books. Oh, my books. Can you go get them? No. David Dalkey, what does he need money for? Research, so they can find a cure for muscular dystrophy. See, that's how I'm gonna get him to run. I'm gonna walk on my hands across the gym and collect quarters from everyone. And what makes you think everybody's gonna pony up a quarter? Pony up? <laughs> can you even walk on your hands? You bet. I was practicing in the backyard this morning. <laughs> Hold these. <clears throat> Head up, arch your back, straight legs. Whoa, Mr. Merrick, you're strong. <sighs> State wrestling champ, 1946. Nothing better than wrestling to build up those arms. Now get. Bye, Mr. Merrick. Did you guys see Mickey Mantle play last week? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. You want to wrestle me? Are you talking to me? Yeah, you want to wrestle me. Are you kidding? No, come on, come on, wrestle me. Pick up some in your own size. <gasps> whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. Well, it certainly looked like fighting to me. No, it wasn't anything like that. It was training, Miss O'Donnell. I have to wrestle every day to make myself super strong. See, I need to walk on my hands across the gym on parent night to raise money for muscular dystrophy. So I have to get stronger. And Mr. Merrick says there's nothing that'll make you stronger. First of all, there's a time and a place for everything. And parent night is not where we raise money for charitable causes. Secondly, it is Mrs. Thompson, not I, who handles parent night. And I'm not gonna bother her with this. Yes, it's a grandiose idea. And frankly, it would be the last thing on my agenda. Mm -hmm. So I don't wanna hear another word about it. What I do want to hear is you finishing your science project on time, turning in your schoolwork, and not creating any more disruptions on school grounds. Are we clear? Yes, Miss O'Donnell, we're clear. And we have to talk to Miss Thompson about it because she's in charge of parent night, not Miss O'Donnell. And she said it was the last thing on the agenda. Yep, she liked it a lot. She said it was a grandiose idea. Wow, cool. I've almost got all the labels finished. I've still got to do Terraris Glaiku and Lactrodectus Hesperus. Great. I'll get those from you and polish them and put them in. You want shiny? I'll show you shiny. This is going to be the coolest parent night ever. Hey, do you know what grandiose means? Uh, no. Give me the dictionary. It's in my bag. Magnificent and brilliant. 
Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. Brilliant. Operation Handstand. And you boys have cleared all this with Miss O'Donnell? You bet. I went straight to her office and explained the whole thing. She said it was noble and magnificent. Noble and magnificent? Are you sure she said that? And brilliant. She said that, huh? And you boys are serious about this? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Super serious. If you really are, you need to get a game plan. Start by gathering up the troops. Wait, troops? Troops. People you think you're gonna need to help out? And don't wait till the last minute. I suggest you crank it up and hop to it. Okay. A drug? It's something they've begun using in other schools around the country. And it's been a very successful way to mainstream problem children. I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. I've talked it over with a number of doctors. And Lyle does display many symptoms of the condition they call MBD, minimal brain dysfunction. Minimal brain dysfunction? My son gets good grades. Again, it's not about the grades. What I'm explaining to you is that they've created a medication that we can use to calm him down and make it possible for him to focus on what he's doing. It'll also make it far less likely he'll engage in his typically reckless, I should say dangerous behavior. He's a good boy. He just gets busy sometimes and he doesn't think things through. But I don't see how. I'm sorry to interrupt. But. You know, he's not the only one who might get hurt by his antics. The only other option would be the Guild School. Of course, the choice is yours. But I'll need an answer by the end of the week. Are we doing something wrong? I mean... Is this just how it's done nowadays? What'd the doctor say? He said he's heard of it before. Is anybody else in the school taking it? I don't know, Ron. What does diet have to do with this? I don't know. It's energy. We need to work him out. Exhaust him. I know. Sweetheart, it's okay. It's okay. You know, he's been in trouble so many times at school. I'm just thinking that maybe, maybe there's something to what they're saying. We still need to come up with something. I know. I mean, we've we've tried sports, haven't we? We 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 could, yeah, we could send him to a farm. Sports. You know, make him work during the days. He gets off school, he goes. Shovels horse crap or something, I don't know. That he's minimal brain dysfunction? You really believe that? I don't even know what that means. I don't either, but it doesn't sound good and it doesn't sound like our son. I don't know, Ron. I, I feel like we're running out of options. I'm not comfortable putting him on the medication. And going to the guild school is not an option. I just don't know what to do. And we have to decide by tomorrow. I mean, what, do you, what do you think we should do? Hazel, how should I know what to do? I gotta be at work in four hours. Good night. That's all for today. Wasn't that fun? Yes, Mrs. Maxfield. You're excused. Lyle, come here. You're awfully quiet today. Are you feeling all right? Yes, I'm okay. Thank you, Mrs. Maxfield. I take a pill now. 
because I was driving everybody crazy. All right, go to your next class. Check this out! Good gravy, David. That's a world-class catch right there. So, my sister said she would help me put together a proposal for Operation Handstand to give Mrs. Thompson. Oh, that? Yeah, I was thinking. Maybe we better wait on that. I need a little bit more time. What? Quick, fly Shoot, it's getting away. At least we got the beetle. Off days? Yeah. Are you kidding me, Mom? Come on, move your foot. Last week, he chased a butterfly all over Five Mile Prairie. Oh. He, he was gone so long, I thought he forgot about me. And yesterday, he didn't chase anything. Not even when we saw an emerald dragonfly. Okay, here we go. There we go. Okay. Ready? And. Oh, good. David, I think Lyle's been put on something to, to help slow him down a bit. Why would someone do that? David? May I go to the restroom? Of course. I'll send Lyle with you. That's okay, Mrs. Stewart. or did he get hit by a car? They want to know why I'm in a wheelchair, but you know it's none of those things. It's just one day the doctor said there would be no more walking, and then they said there would be no more running. It's not like I broke my legs or anything. David, I'm sorry this has happened to you. I truly no, am. No, no, no. That's not what I mean, Miss O'Donnell. There's nothing anybody could do about me, but with Lyle, it's different. He just sits there and doesn't do anything. He's behaving himself in class. He's not getting into trouble. Don't you want your friend to do well? David, I have no idea why you're so upset about this. Because, Miss O'Donnell, I can't catch a dragonfly. Son, why aren't you in bed? Lyle. Lyle. Hazel, you better get in here. If you 
do that, then what? I don't know, Ron. But I'm worried sick about this. Isn't he behaving himself in school? No notes, no calls, no hacks, no Miss O'Donnell. Yes. But there's something that's just not right about it to me. He isn't the same. I hate this feeling like we're being held hostage. I want my son back. Maybe we could move. We can't move. The checkbook is empty and, and you started working extra shifts. Well, I could borrow enough for a down. And maybe you could put off graduating for a couple of years. Well, but if we're selling the house, we might as well sell the car too. I mean, there's your money. How about that? Hey, hey, Mike. Yeah? Have you seen Lyle? No, I thought he was with you. It's loyal! What? Hi. Hey, Mr. Mark. What happened? I, I guess I fell asleep. Please don't tell anybody. Lyle, look at me. I'm fine. I'm sorry, Mr. Donald. Am I in trouble? No. You're not in trouble. Come with me. We'll call your mother. One minute, Miss O'Donnell. What are you doing to that boy? It's not right, and you know it. I understand the reasoning behind this, Miss O'Donnell, but it just doesn't seem to be working for Lyle. There's not a thing wrong with the youngster, not a thing, and he needs to be off the medication. This is not the time nor the place for this discussion. creating some side issues. I believe it would be best if you discontinued taking it. Thank you. Goodbye. not be another note. No, Mom, it's nothing bad. It's a permission slip. We're going to Brick's Bakery. It's a donut factory. Isn't that great? It's something, all right. Sounds to me like a recipe for disaster. Mom, they've been making donuts since the Civil War. Lyle, the Civil War. Well, some war. Shoot, Mom, I'm gonna be the only kid since the war that hasn't gone to Brick's. Besides, David needs me. All right. 
right there. I signed it. But I don't have to say this. Are you listening to me? No donuts. If you get hungry, you can have this apple. Excuse me, you're gonna have to move. What do I have to move? Because that's David's spot, that's why. Huh. That's funny. I don't see his name on it. You don't? Well, here it is. D-A-V-I-D. Huh, slapping like a girl makes you feel like a man. Slapping like a girl. What's going on here? He won't move out of David's spot. I can sit somewhere else. You, plant yourself somewhere else. Now. This ain't over, you super punk. You're mince me. Turn around and sit. What do you think he meant by this isn't over? He didn't say this isn't over. What he said was this ain't over. What's the difference? The difference is he's gonna pound me in the ground and pulverize me. That's the difference. Thanks a lot for saying nothing. Like what? What was I supposed to say? I don't know. Anything. Anything. Shoot, David, you could have spit on him. I wouldn't spit on someone. I know that. What's that supposed to mean? What it means is, they have a cure for polio, but why can't they find a cure for you? This is no big deal. Everything's exactly how it's supposed to be. Well, don't you just ever want to scream and yell? What good would that do? Well, my mom says it can be therapeutic. Hey! What's this? It wasn't me. Looks like hot chocolate for Sharon Ann and me. She likes hot chocolate, you know. Are you kidding me? <laughs> gotcha. Those blue sprinkles? Oh yes, sweetheart. Would you like one? Grace? I'll take those right there. The ones with the blue sprinkles. Thank you, sir. You know you're not supposed to eat those. Look, they're blue, blue sprinkles. You know blue's the only color I can see. Yeah, 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 blue, 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 who cares? You're not supposed to eat donuts, and you know it. What's the big deal, it's only one. You're not gonna tell me, are you? No, I'm not your mother. What's that? An apple fritter. I, I can't eat it. It's too hard to swallow. <coughs> no, don't do that. There's people starving in China. Fine. It's your funeral. It's just like eating an apple. Oh. Hey, David. Let's go sledding. Far out. You ate that donut, and then you ate my apple fritter. It was so good. Come on. It didn't you taste that good. You can't blame me. How about right here? 
let's go all the way to the top. You're the boss. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry doesn't fix a thing. Not a thing. How badly was the donkey boy hurt? Pretty bad. Pretty bad? What does pretty bad mean? Is he home? Did he have to see a doctor? Is he in the hospital or what? I don't know. They just picked him up and drove off. You are grounded until I say you're not. Your mother and I are sick about this, just sick. We did not raise you this way, and I can guarantee you things are going to change. When the time comes, you will apologize to that boy, face to face, eye to eye. And until then, the only thing I will hear from you are the words, Dad, I will change. And then I expect to see it happen. Dad, I will. Speak up and stand into it. Dad, I will change. As you all know, we've had an ongoing problem with this. One thing after another, after another. We've been very lucky up till now, nothing truly catastrophic has happened. But this last episode was very nearly that. After giving this a great deal of thought, I have come to the conclusion that there is only one option remaining. It is unfortunate, but I feel it's for the best. I have already spoken with Sister Brigida the principal at St. Thomas More, and she has agreed to take Lyle for the remainder of the school year. Obviously, the choice is yours, but one thing is certain, he will no longer remain in my school. I am doing my part to protect the children, and I recommend you take action as well before David is irreparably harmed and Lyle is forced to live with the consequences for the rest of his life. Miss O'Donnell, may I say something? Please do. David's only been in public school for a couple of years, and it was wonderful that you accepted him here. We appreciate so much your efforts with David. You know, before this year, David never got hit in the head with a snowball, never got shot with BBs. He didn't need a tetanus shot every six months. 
It's been a challenging year for us, to say the least. But he used to just sit by our picture window and watch the world go by. A boy needs to be a boy. And now, one of my greatest joys is when he comes home with chickweed in his hair, smelling like the outdoors. Then I know he's having a life like other boys his age. So, what I'm trying to say is... What we are trying to say is we don't want the boys to be separated. They're friends. We will do whatever we have to do to make this work. We will. I cannot agree to this. My teachers are very busy with parent night this month. But after that, I will meet with them and inform them of my decision. And I expect for you to have made arrangements for Lyle to go to another school by that time. I simply cannot allow this relationship to continue in my school. so good. All right. I want you to go climb back into bed and I will check on you in a few minutes. Your timing is terrible. It's finals week and I have my exams. It's okay, Mom. I'll be fine right here. Well, I'll be back by four. Your dad should be home by then. Mom? What's wrong with me? Nothing. It's probably just a flu bug. No, that's not what I mean. Why am I always getting in trouble? What's wrong with me? Nothing is wrong with you. Nothing at all. You just have a little bit of extra. A little more than other people. And you need to channel it into something good. That's it. I want to give my extra to David. I don't want it, and he really needs it. If I give my extra to David, maybe we'd both be normal. Honey, I wish it were that simple, but it's not. All you can do for David is be the best friend that you can be. Remember I told you that? You? Have a good heart. Not everybody does, but you're a truly good one. I love you, Mom. I love you more. I heard that. I need to clear this with your school? No, Mr. 
Miss O'Donnell already knows about it. She thinks it's a great idea. Well, I'd have to agree with her on that point. But we're getting off track here. Back to this business about you skipping school. Am I in really big trouble? Yes, you are. But I'll tell you what. You promised me to behave yourself until I retire. And we can keep this between us. Really? I'm going to hold you to that. Next time, it's Juvenile Hall. Juvie? Thanks, Officer Jenkins. Oh, and Officer Jenkins, can you do the siren? I'll tell you what happened. I snuck over and climbed through your window and I... What did you I... climb in my window? Wait a minute, you didn't let me finish. So I grabbed the labels and put them all in. And it was the biggest, craziest bug collection ever. Crazy cool, you know that, right? You're not gonna believe this, but when I went to go grab it from under the bed, a mouse had chopped all the bugs off. Well, except the stink bug. Stink. Anyway, I grabbed the mouse and I was looking at him, and all of a sudden, he made a sad face and it just died in my hands. Those carbon tetrachloride got him. It's like I killed him. Stop. You didn't. David, are you mad at me? No. Why? I tried to pull the brakes. I couldn't. You don't think I tried? I tried my hardest. I'm not mad. It wasn't your fault. What do you mean it wasn't my fault? Yes, it was. Don't you know it's always my fault? I'm the one who couldn't stop the chair. I couldn't pull the brakes. I knew you couldn't reach the brakes. You should have bailed. Why didn't you? Because, David, friends don't bail. They stick together. You know what? No, what? We should have just done a volcano. What? No. Volcanoes never win. Fungus. We entered a fungus collection. That's the lousiest science project I've ever seen. Hey, look, we got honorable mentions. One for each of us. Those are certificates of participation. Everyone gets one of those. Besides, this is just a big, giant salad. Oh, for crying out loud. There's another spider. This place needs fumigating. Seven. Holy smokes, that's not just another spider. That's the queen. My mom's been looking all over for her. Can you believe that after all of this, she's still alive? She's a fighter, all right. I'm gonna put her outside, where she belongs. Okay. If you'd all take your seats, we're ready to begin. 
Thank you. Thank you. What a great crowd. I'd have to say this is by far the largest group we've ever had for Parent Night. We're so glad you could all come. Once again, our teachers and students have done a fabulous job preparing for this evening. And we also have a special surprise in store for you. So, let's get started right away. First up, from Mrs. Wilson's sixth grade class, we have Susie Thomas and her Poodle Lulu. Captain Roy Robinette. We're here for the big event. Hello. I'm Miss O'Donnell. You gentlemen must have come right from work. Oh, that we did, Miss O'Donnell. So glad you could make it. I'm curious about the buckets. Oh, well, we thought it would be a nice touch. You know, for the quarters. The quarters? Well, that's what the little man calls them. You know, flat top. He says quarters. What he really means is the donations. I see. I need to have a talk outside right now. Are you responsible for this? Of course you are. This has absolutely got to be. 8 30. I'm here. It's what we talked about. It's the drummers. For Operation Handstand. Operation Handstand? What are you talking about? I don't know what to do with you. Do you think that you can always push so hard that you'll win? Win? Win what? You know exactly what I mean. I'm afraid to say anything. Then go in and sit down and I will explain it to the firemen and the policemen and the musicians for you. Go! Mr. Donald, I was talking about running. Running what on earth? David said he was going to run, and this is our last chance. He said he was going to run. He said that. He said he was going to run with me. And I know that'll never happen unless they find a cure. And they need money for that. I did everything you told me to do, Miss O'Donnell. What I told you to do? I wish just once you would do what I told you to do. There is one thing that I need to know right now, and that is, are you gonna go in there and explain it to these people, or am I? Well, I'm waiting. 
You said you liked my idea and that it was grandiose, and I know what that means. It means magnificent and noble, because David looked it up, and brilliant too. And you said I had to finish our science project first and do a good job, and we did. And we would have won the blue ribbon if that mouse hadn't eaten our real project, because it was a big bug collection with real brass labels, way better than that giant salad. And you said I had to stay out of trouble on school grounds. And I did, because that donut didn't count since it wasn't on school grounds. And we gave Miss Thompson the proposal exactly like you said. And we would have told you about the firemen and Officer Jenkins and the drummers, but you said you didn't want to hear a word about it. And you even said that it was the last thing on the agenda. And that's how we knew. Everything all right in there? I'm sure you're wondering why the fire department has joined us. It's not because there's a fire, so everyone please remain calm. <laughs> you will remember that I mentioned that we have a special surprise for you tonight. Well, Lyle Hatcher, one of our fourth grade students from Mrs. Stewart's class would like to issue a challenge to everyone here. He will attempt to walk across the floor on his hands all the way up that center aisle. He says that he can do it. If he makes it, he is asking you to donate your pocket change to help find a cure for muscular dystrophy. What do you say? We can't all walk on our hands. And personally, I don't want to. But we can all do our part. Support the cause. Please, drop your change into the buckets. Our firemen are standing by. I'm 
dear Lord. Not now, not this way. Please don't take it now. I don't want my children to have to live with this. It's not their fault. Please, Lord, not now, not this way. Please don't take it. Okay. 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 I'm right here. I'm here. I was almost there. It was so beautiful. And he sent me back. <laughs> Mom, I'm going to see David. I'll be back by dinner. No, you are not. He isn't ready for company yet. I know, but I need to talk to him. As soon as he's feeling better, you can go see him. I will let you know when that is. When? It's taken forever. It's been three weeks. That is hardly forever. As soon as I know, you'll know. At your residence? Wait just a minute, please. Lyle! It's Sharon Ann. Pretty Sharon. Sharon Ann? Hey, what are you doing? Nothing. Guess what? My dad says we're getting a new lawnmower. So me and you can use the old one. What are we going to do with that? I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to weld it to the wheelchair and put a glass pack on it. That'll make it rip. We'd better have a roll bar this time. A roll bar? That's a great idea. Why don't I come over and we'll figure it out? Okay. Maybe see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye, Lyle. And when joy floods your heart, know that its true face is hidden within the farthest reaches of grief. For the river of your laughter has been etched by the flow of your tears. The deeper the wellspring of your joy, the greater the suffering that is contained therein. And how could it possibly be otherwise? Consider how instruments of music have been fashioned with the power to calm and soothe, but only after the wood has been carved and twisted into submission. Thus, when your heart is filled with joy, you will know that it is your grief that has brought you to this place. And when you are overwhelmed with grief, you will know that it is rooted in the loss of your joy. They are twins, joy and grief. When one is awake, the other sleeps. And when one visits you, the other waits patiently outside your door. They are vigilant companions through life. In the end, they will join hands to lay with you and share in your final breath. Mom? Yeah. Will you promise me something? Of course, sweetheart. Anything. Promise me you won't cry when I'm gone. You know where I'm going. And... I'm going to be okay. Tell me you promise. I promise. Mama? Don't forget me.
just got off the phone with Mrs. Dalkey. David's passed away. What? He's gone, sweetheart. His heart just gave up. Well, when I talked to him, he said he would see me later. That's what he said. I'm sorry, Lyle. I know it hurts. But he's gone. That's not fair, Mom. That's not fair. You know what I think? I think that David is running right now and doing all of the things that he wanted to do. Well, who was supposed to do those things with me? It's a bad thing. Why would you say that? I didn't pray for him. He prayed for everyone, but who prayed for him? I should have prayed for him. You can do that anytime you want. And you know what? I know that you will see your friend David again someday. Really, Mom? Count on it. <laughs>